three assist taxiing jets without accidents but wait to do this job safely you must know the performance characteristics of a taxiing jet and what precautions they dictate because jets are slimmer and the engines can be built into the fuselage or tucked in against it the wings can be kept thin this means there's not much room to house the main landing gear so the tires are thinner and the traction is reduced braking effectiveness is reduced in proportion you can't expect a taxiing jet to stop on a dime and another thing the narrower the landing gear the more tipsy a jet plane is in a crosswind with wing tanks high in the air and full it stands no chance at all in the blast from another jet you've already been told about the suction don't leave articles adrift on the deck and watch the blast keep away from both ends and don't maneuver to point the blast at other planes or people don't wear loose gear that can fall out on deck the suction will get it keep your chin strap tight for the same reason and always protect your eyes the jet blast is much more powerful than prop wash and the fumes may have a bad effect on them and one more thing when anybody gets in the cockpit of an armed jet get out of the line of fire the guns are level and low and if accidentally discharged they will rake the deck now with these precautions in mind we're ready to get that squadron into the air you've already removed the duck covers and the pilots have manned their planes the pilot turns up on signal with auxiliary power. If he lights off a little late, there may be a sheet of flame from the exhaust. The firefighters will get any resulting deck fire chemically. Pull the starting jeep away a beam. Keep clear of blast and suction. On signal, pull chocks, moving away a beam and aft. Jet planes taxi according to the same signals used for other planes and the pilot can see them better with the nose close to the deck and no prop in the way. If the wings aren't spread before you bring the plane out of its spot, be sure the jury struts are off. Point the plane into the wind and give the signal to spread them. And lower flaps. Although it's not mandatory, a nose wheel guide bar can be helpful, especially when headed for the catapult. Speed changes and sharp turns are difficult to execute with tricycle gear, especially with a jet, which has no prop wash and can't use its control surfaces to help. So it's extremely important that all concerned understand the fine points and degrees of urgency in the conventional taxi signals. The rapid come on means just that, give her the gun, hard. This means come on steadily, hold your speed. When the plane director begins to lower his arms, he's asking for diminished power, a natural slowdown. And when he gets to this point, he wants the brakes, lightly. As his arms come up again, palms toward the pilot, he's indicating that a full stop is imminent. And when he does this, he wants brakes on full. At any time during the signaling, he may ask for a slight line-up turn by pointing at the wheel to be braked, lightly. For a sharp turn, he points steadily. For a full pivot, if necessary, he asks for a lock break by pointing at it with a clenched fist. And he turns the plane over to the next director like this. The pilot can see well, but he can't see his nose wheel. At the catapult, he must be guided to get it around the shuttle and into place. It is not necessary to straighten out the nose wheel completely before takeoff. The catapult will align it straight with the deck the instant it is fired.